Bow hunter syndrome is a rare cause of vertebral basilar insufficiency. It's also called rotational vertebral artery syndrome. It's first described by Dr. Sorensen in 1978, um, and the cause of it is compression on one of the uh, vertebral arteries, typically the dominant vertebral artery by adjacent structures. And, uh, and those causes can include uh, things such as a bony spur, a uh, osteophyte compressing on the vertebral artery, um, sometimes hypertrophy of the uh, adjacent muscles or ligaments can uh, produce the same phenomenon. And uh, it could also be caused by trauma and intrinsic vessel pathologies such as dissections. The presentation of Bowhunter syndrome is um, any symptoms that could be caused by insufficiency of blood flow to the posterior circulation. Um, and uh, those symptoms can commonly present as vertigo or dizziness, uh, nausea, sometimes vomiting, and uh, things like dysarthria, difficulty with swallowing or dysphagia, um, difficulty with vision, changes in hearing, and uh, syncopal episodes are also common. Typically, these symptoms are transient um, and they happen when the patient turns uh, his or her head. And uh, the symptoms should get better once uh, the head is back to the neutral position. And uh, once the flow is regained, the symptoms should uh, get better. Uh, but a complication of this disease is a stroke. Uh, with these repeatedly head movements, it's possible that uh, the vessel gets injured and that can cause dissection or thrombus formation, which can lead to a stroke. Um, the uh, Bowhunter syndrome is more common in uh, males compared to females uh, with a ratio of about two to one. Uh, it's typically diagnosed with a combination of a history physical exam as well as radiographical evidence. Uh, you can use a um, x-ray of the neck to look for any bony changes, any osteoarthritic changes. Uh, we can use a CT or MR and geography to look for evidence of compression on the vertebral artery. And uh, there's also use for ultrasonography with Doppler to look at the flow of blood through the vessels. Uh, but the gold standard diagnostic uh, modality is uh, a cerebral angiogram. And what we do during the cerebral angiogram is to um, ask the patient to turn his or her head to one side, and we, uh, the patient can become symptomatic, and we can also, as we inject the contrast, look at um, any um, evidence of either uh, lack of flow or uh, critical stenosis in the respective vertebral artery, um, which uh, the flow will regain uh, when the patient brings their head back to neutral position um, and typically when they turn their head to the contralateral side, the symptoms should also not be there. Um, so that's how the diagnosis is made. The treatment, um, since we don't have a lot of evidence uh, because of the rarity of this disease, we don't have guidelines, but the common practice, uh, there are three different treatment modalities that people use, either conservative management, surgical management, or interventional management. Uh, with the conservative management, uh, typically you want to have your patient keep, your, keep their head and neck uh, immobilized. And uh, also uh, you can consider aspirin, especially if there's concern about, or antiplatelets, if there's concerns about dissection of the vertebral artery. Uh, with the surgical management, the options are decompressive surgery plus minus uh, fusion. And recently people have been trying uh, endovascular interventional procedures. And those include embolization, typically for the non-dominant vertebral artery if it's symptomatic. And um, also uh, stent placement has been tried with promising results.